there, Lindsay here, the frugal crafter. I want to show you what I painted with a group of ladies the other day. Um, these tulips, I actually have a tutorial on how to paint this on my um, channel, on my YouTube channel, but I wanted to share this because it was so fun. I was hired to do a painting party uh, for a bridal shower at a um, public space in Bangor and it was so much fun and I thought I would share this experience with you guys because I know a lot of you um, love to paint, you love to share, and maybe you've thought about turning your passion into a business. And paint parties is kind of a really fun way to do that. Now that might be a trademark name, I have no idea. I know there are sipping paints, paint and sips, painting with Pino, Pino's palette. There are so many different companies out there that do this, but there's also a lot of um, just individual artists that go around to people's houses. They're hired to provide um, the same service. So let's talk about what you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need an easel. I like this one. This is my French easel. Um, it's got a drawer in here where I keep supplies. Um, if you can see here, this is, I had this, this will stand on its own legs on the floor. I am not doing well today. I feel like I forgot how to talk. Um, but I like it because I can have my canvas here that I'm painting on and then I can have the one that I've already painted up there so I can see it and so my students can see it too. The other thing I like about this is in the drawer, I can actually keep all the brushes I need for all my students in the class and I can also keep the paints that I need, the smaller bottles anyway. I do also get bring a large bottle of white because I use more white than anything else. And um, this is actually Chromacryl and it's by Chroma. I got it at Blick. It was pretty affordable, um, but it was a really nice opaque uh, white that had a good open time and I found it very good, so I wanted to recommend that. I also like the uh, Delta Ceram coat. That worked out really well on the canvas. I gotta tell you, the uh, the craft paints work really well if you get a good quality craft paint like Ceram coat or Folk Art or Americana because it flows a lot easier. And if you're trying to teach a bunch of beginners to paint and you're trying to get backgrounds in, it's just gonna, it's just gonna paint smoother and easier for them. And it's also less expensive than getting like your, um, tube artist acrylics that might kind of dry on the palette before they actually get a chance to use it. So that would be my tip right there. You do have to keep costs in mind. Um, my painting I designed so it could use one flat hog brush and one round synthetic brush. So I just brought um, about 14 of each. That way if anyone had a problem with their brush I had a spare. If some extra people showed up um, I had spares. So I wouldn't have to turn anyone's anyone away because that would be extra money. Now somebody asked me do you price by the project or do you price uh, by the hour, how do you figure out what you're going to charge? Well, I set up a uh, minimum. I got to have at least eight students or be paid for eight. Uh, canvas um, acrylic, 8x10 canvas, I charge $20 for that project. Um, watercolor, 8x10, I would charge 15 If it was some other sort of surface, I would charge a different amount. Now, if I did like a 16x20 but did a painting panel, I might be able to do that for between 20 or 25 um, but I would have to probably have my design already on the the panel because that would really, it just takes longer to fill a longer space. And you can pretty much count on whatever you paint, it's going to take a beginner three to four times that amount of time to paint. So this took me 45 minutes, it took me um, a little over two hours to do that with the student. So keep that in mind, they're not going to paint as fast as you do, so you want to make sure that you have a realistic um, time allotted for your project. Also, you know, if you're at somebody's house and you don't mind and they don't mind, staying after is not a big deal. But if you're at a restaurant or a bar or a community space where you're renting by the hour, it is a big deal. You have to be out at a certain time. The other thing you're going to need is um, a palette. So my French easel came with a palette and I would just put wax paper on it or palette paper or something. Um, but you're going to need palettes for your students. And um, I would recommend like paper plates. I had to get foam plates. I apologize to the earth and to all of you guys, but it was like the only thing they had and I was in a super rush. Um, so paper plates or palette paper, or if you want to get a permanent palette that you'll wash every time, there's one called, I think it's called a San Francisco slant and it's got wells in it and it's meant for acrylic. And I think you can even peel off the paint if you let it dry. I'm not hundred percent sure. I know some can, some palettes can, but I would look around and find something with a big enough mix area so your students will have room to work. I wouldn't get those small round eight well palettes. Those just are too small. You don't have any room to mix anything and they're going to get pretty messy pretty quick. Um, you're going to need, I'm sorry for all the ums. I feel like I'm just um, 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 um. um did it again. You're going to need paper towels, probably two per person. Two paper towels, not rolls per person. Uh, water containers. I got this big um, coffee container. I actually have two of them. See? Another one. Fallen. I'm falling apart. There we go. Um, and inside I have a bunch of smaller containers, just like leftover um, 
you know, old takeout containers and, you know, these little, I had my kids out of like these little cereal cups for snack, like all week because I needed the containers for this class, but something that fits together that you can put, um, in a container like this. And I like this cause I'll use one of the big red coffee containers for my water so I don't have to change it. And then, um, and then at the end I can go through and I can collect all the dirty water in this and either, you know, dump it outside or dump it someplace where it's not going to clog pipes. You know, you just want to be mindful of that. Usually I, I'm not a big, I'm not big worried about the, not big worried. I apparently never took an English class in my life. Um, I'm not really that worried about the rinse water going down the drain personally. Some people don't want it. So you, you know, it's up to you there. Um, you're also going to need, let's see. Oh, I want to talk about the easel. This is the, the pros of this. I told you storage drawer looks nice, holds your stuff. But the con of this is that it's very heavy. So if you don't have this easel, you may want to consider getting like a um, metal tubular aluminum easel. They are so much lighter weight. They're a lot quicker to set up. Like this will take me two to five minutes to set up tubular one. You'll be up in 30 seconds and um, you can throw it right in your like a nice big bag and you could just put your supplies in the bag too, you know, maybe a separated by like Ziploc bags or something like that to keep it organized. But you know, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. You'll just need your surface, your brushes, your paints, palettes, rinse water buckets, paper towels, you know, um, you have to make sure that you have enough for everybody. Plus a couple extras in case somebody brings a friend, you know, you don't want to turn down that potential customer. Um, your advertising is pretty much going to be done word of mouth. So like if you did that, say you did a painting and you're, you know, you posted it on Facebook and you said, Hey, I'm thinking about doing painting parties. Is there anybody that'd be interested? And I mean, you might even like, if you've never taught before, you might even do them just for the cost of supplies, just to get your name out there and get used to it and see if it's something you like. And then you'll start getting referrals from your friends. And I think that's um, probably the way to do it. There's like no overhead other, you know, the, the overhead of your supplies, is quickly paid for when you do a class and um, it's a great way to see if you would like to teach full-time I know a lot of you guys um, do your art as a hobby while you work a full-time job doing something like this a couple nights a month would bring you in some extra cash that you could possibly um, put towards starting a business or some other artistic endeavor or even just help you decide whether you want to leave your job to teach art full time. It's going to be a completely different experience uh, teaching at a paint party versus teaching um, a painting class because the people coming to a painting party may or may not have painted before. They're um, certainly not painting all the time. They're beginners usually and their goal for the painting class is to have fun and enjoy themselves and be creative. So I got a few questions um, the other day on my channel when I said I was going to do this video and one person said, what do I do if I really want to do this, but I don't think my work is good enough or I'm, I'm self-conscious. Well, you do definitely need to be outgoing and friendly, but also remember that they're not taking this class. They're not coming to a painting party because they think you are just the best artist ever and they want to learn all of your techniques. They're coming because they want to enjoy time with friends and they want to be creative and have a good time. And if you can provide that for them, then you're going to be just fine. So please, don't be harder on yourself and try it. And if you're worried that, that people aren't getting their money's worth, then, then maybe try it at a friend's house and don't charge them and, you know, see how it goes. Um, the other question is, how do I charge? Do I charge by the hour or by the piece? And I think I did an answer that, but yeah, by the piece. And it, it can vary. Like you may live in an area where you can get $50 for a two hour class with the materials included. You may live in an area where you get $20, but I would say somewhere in that ballpark would be a pretty fair price to charge. Uh, and you can also consider doing kids parties. It doesn't have to be only adult, um, you know, wine parties. It could be kids parties too. So like you could do a painting with a group of 10 year olds at, um, you know, at a public space that the parents, you know, rent or whatnot, or, um, in your studio, if you have one. So, you know, just kind of be mindful. One thing I want to mention, cause you know, the sip and paint is so popular right now. Um, the reason that people can do that and not have to have any special licensing is because if, um, if you're going to like a bar or a restaurant to do one, the restaurant or bar is serving the alcohol and they have the liquor license. If you're going to some somebody's home, then they're serving their guests, 
you know, you are never to be bringing the alcohol if it's going to be a sip and paint party, uh, because then you're liable if something happens. That's that you would need a liquor license or bartender's license or something like that. And, um, you know, your responsibility is to bring the painting project and supplies and to teach them the art. So, um, you know, if the host asks you to pick up a six pack on the way, I really wouldn't. I think that brings you, that would put you into some sort of legal uh, gray area that I wouldn't recommend. And as always, anytime you're starting some business endeavor, um, please do your own due diligence and your own research about all these subjects to make sure that you are abiding by the laws in your town or jurisdiction. So D disclaimer, disclaimer, don't hold me liable for anything you choose to do with the information you get on my channel. I should just put that at the beginning of every video I ever do. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think that you guys, a lot of you would really enjoy this. Uh, the thing to remember is that you are spreading the love of art to people that may never have painted before. You need to have patience, you need to be encouraging, and you need to be friendly. And if you are those things, I think you could succeed quite well. And you know what? Another question I wanted to answer before it's even asked, yes, you can use the things that I teach you on YouTube, the projects that I show you to teach in a painting party. I don't mind. So go forth and have fun and make some money and don't be a starving artist. And that's just about it. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this art marketing video was helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. And guys, help each other out. If you have experience doing painting parties and you want to chime in down below, uh, offer your tips and advice, please do so because uh, we all grow as a community by helping one another and the rising tide lifts all boats. So the more successful artists that are out there, the more there will be, I think anyway. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me that thumb up and share this video with your friends and hit the subscribe button. I don't know. Is it there? Is it there? I don't even know. It's probably going to change. So I should, probably shouldn't point at anything. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.